I have a huge list of 100 products and I'm going to show you on my computer right here. It's a huge list in an Excel spreadsheet of 100 different products that you can sell arbitrage right now. So, you know, this is a big list. The ROI ranges from around 50%, oh, there's one for 38, to over 100, 143, you know, there's 174. So there's a lot of range on these products. There's a lot of different profit you can make. So this list is going to be available for free to anyone who watches this video. Just uh, click the link in the description. Give me your name and email, and I'll email you the link to it. It's in my Google Drive, so I don't want to really share that link directly on YouTube because then that link might get spread to other people. I really just want this link to be for people that are subscribed to me because I want to share this with my viewers directly. So 100 products you can sell today on Amazon, um, completely free list, so go check it out if you're interested. So without further ado, let's get into this online arbitrage order and package it up. You, you play, play me. Hey, it's Jordan, Millionaire Millennial. Today I'm going to be going with you guys through an entire online arbitrage order that I made that I'm going to, I just received the boxes today. I'm going to take those boxes, I'm going to prep them, I'm going to pack them, I'm going to ship them off to Amazon's warehouse, and then we're going to see how they sell. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So what we want to do now is we want to jump into my computer over here and we want to make sure that we got everything that we ordered and then we want to create a shipment plan and then we want to consolidate everything, label it and ship it off. So I am at the listing, I'm going to go ahead and go down here, I'm going to click have one to sell, sell on Amazon. But it's pretty easy, you just say how many you have, um, that's how many you order, I usually just match low price and then I want Amazon to ship and provide customer service if my item sells, calculate fees, of course, to put in how many I'm going to sell, and then you hit submit your listing and create shipment, all right? So once I do that, this page where I can choose the manufacturer barcode or the Amazon barcode. So you can choose between the manufacturer barcode or the Amazon barcode, but I always go with the Amazon barcode for a couple reasons. One, this barcode on the product might not actually match the same barcode that Amazon thinks this product has. So then that puts you in a huge world of hurt when they get there and they're like, this isn't the product you sent in. If you check manufacturer's barcode, then you get commingled, which means your product gets placed in a bin with everybody else's products that they sent in and theirs might not be like legit. They might not have the real product. They might have a fake product or whatever. So you definitely want to use Amazon's barcode because that is a barcode that is registered to you only, not just the product. It's registered to you only. So I always click Amazon barcode. Hit save and continue. Okay. And it'll come up with the send replenish inventory page. All right. So from here, you've got a couple things here. So you want to create a new shipment plan, put in your ship from address. Obviously you don't put in my address. That doesn't make any sense and then your packaging type. Individual products is going to be if you're shipping like a bunch of ones of different products. So like you've got like 20 different products and you're going to be shipping individual ones. Case packed is going to be if you're shipping a bunch of the same product, which is exactly what I'm doing. I have a bunch of these. I'm going to be shipping a bunch of these in, so I'm going to pick case packed. Right? Then this is where you put in how many units you have and how many cases you have. So you're allowed to have 150 units per case Right? And I think I've got less than that. All we need to do is put the Amazon label on there. Remember when we picked Amazon label over barcode, uh, manufacturer barcode, we want to put those labels on there. So what I choose is I go with 30 up labels. You can choose whatever kind of label you want. 30 ups are typically the most normal. That's what a lot of people use. That's what I use. You can buy a huge pack of 30 labels. In fact, I've got this, which is 3,000 labels. I think I got this for like 10 or 15 dollars on Amazon, so that's a lot of labels. All right, so what we want to do is print labels for this page. It will download a PDF. If you open that up, you'll see that they're already perfectly arranged to the layout of the page, because the 30 up page is just 30 individual stickers, and it will print 30 um, on each page properly spaced and so all you have to do here is just print this page to the printer with your your 30 ups loaded into the printer 
So once you print out your barcodes, I've already used a couple of them, but you'll get an entire sheet of barcodes. And what you want to do is just take them off and you want to put them over any existing barcodes. So see there's already a barcode here. I want to put it over that barcode so they're going to scan this. You never want to have two barcodes showing on your item because that's going to confuse the people at the warehouse and they're not going to know which one to scan. All right, so make sure there's no other barcodes showing. So this is where we approve the shipment. So we're going to ship 40 units, one case, over to uh, Whitestown. All right, so we can approve this shipment. All right, and once it's approved, it will say work on shipment. And here's where you put in all the information about the package that you're going to be shipping. So, you know, you can pick UPS or FedEx. If you're in Canada or some other country, you're not going to have these deeply discounted shipping options. So you're going to have to ship it using something like Canada Post or, you know, whatever you're shipping in with the UK. Um, but in the United States, you're, you're offered UPS or FedEx. Um, and I personally go with whichever is cheaper. You can check both prices when you get to the bottom. And I've got a UPS over here, and I've got a FedEx over here. So it doesn't matter. Um, I can also arrange for pickup if I've got a huge order that I can't fit in my car. Scrolling down, we see the shipment packaging. We're going to put everything in one box, all right? Or at least we're going to try to fit everything in one box. If we can't fit everything in one box, then you click multiple boxes. Pretty simple. So as far as box weight, all right, um, if you don't have a scale, um, and I don't have a scale, all right, what I do and you know this might be a little off people might be questioning this but I go to the listing I scroll down to where it says item weight or shipping weight rather alright shipping weight is eight ounces right? I take eight ounces right and I times it by how many things I have in the shipment right so I've got 320 ounces and I say 320 ounces to pounds and let's see two pounds that's 20 pounds, okay? So, guess what I put here? 20 pounds. Now, um, you should weigh your boxes and, you know, but as long as it's close, I think it's okay. This is what I've always done, and it's never had a problem before. Um, so, box dimensions, simple enough, whatever box you put them all in. I just use the boxes that they ship in, and I'm going to show you that when I go to package, um, that I just put them all in one box, all right? If you can fit them all in one box, that's great because it'll be cheaper. So let's say that box is like 14 by 12 by 10. Click confirm. Then down here you'll have um, a little calculate button and this is going to calculate the cost of the shipment. So basically it's going to cost me $8.60 to ship it. Once that's all filled out we click I agree the terms and conditions. When you accept these charges it'll say charges accepted. You can void the charges and you have 24 hours to avoid these charges before it is charged to your seller account. Right? So this that $9 will show up as a charge in my seller account. It's not going to charge my credit card or anything. It's going to charge my seller account. And I can void those charges up to 24 hours. So this should be the last thing that you do when you're getting ready to actually ship the box. Then you click print box labels. And this will also be a PDF download. You open it up, it's basically every box is going to have its own page. So if you're shipping in more than one box, you're going to have more than one page. And each um, page has two labels on it, right? So you have the shipping label, which is this large one, and you have the FBA label, which is the smaller one. Both of these need to go on the box. Right here, I've got, this is a sticker paper that's got two labels, all right, on it. And what's great about this is it's the same size and perfect fit for these pages. So you can actually get all of this for free. Notice this is for UPS shipping only. I ship using FedEx all the time, don't tell anybody. But if you go to UPS and make a business account, um, which is free, they'll send you free shipping supplies. So they sent me like hundreds of these. And it's super great because it I don't have to like tape the labels down or anything like that. And they'll ship it to you for free. They pay shipping. You don't you don't pay anything. It's completely free. They'll, they'll mail you a bunch of business supplies it's really great so if you haven't done that already do it it's free <laughs> all right so we'll, we'll print this right onto our two label paper okay and once that's printed out then you're ready to package the box up and ship it off which let's go back over to the box and I'll show you what I mean I got my labels right here I have the unlabeled products here and then I have the labeled products that I'm packing into this box here so I'm just gonna go ahead and label all of them. Making sure to cover up the barcode.
So if you're going to reuse a box that um, it came in, you're going to want to make sure to remove the old shipping labels, okay? So any other labels that are not the ones that you're about to put on, go ahead and take those off. And now you can apply your labels. Not over where the seam is, all right? So notice I put it on this side. This is the cutting seam. When they open the box, they're gonna just slice that. If your label's over that, they're gonna slice the label in half and they're not gonna be able to scan it and all sorts of problems, right? So just make sure to not put it on the seam.